This is a spreadsheet that I put together to go through the Black-Scholes option pricing model. If you're interested in downloading this spreadsheet, you can download it to follow along with the video or just to use on your own. If you want to, I posted it up in Google Docs. This is the address. You can go ahead and pause the video right now if you'd like and download that spreadsheet. Spreadsheet has the five key input variables for the value of an option, time to expiration, exercise price, stock price, volatility, and risk-free rate. We're just going to go ahead and clear those out right now so we can go through an example. And the example we're going to start out with is right here. We've got a stock price of $62.00. The exercise or strike price is $60. Option has 40 days to expiration. 32% volatility, that's our forecast of how much the stock is going to bounce around on an annualized basis. And the risk free rate is 4%. So those are the values we're going to plug into our spreadsheet. So we go back to the spreadsheet tab. Important to recognize the time to expiration has to be in years. So 40 days is 40 365ths of a year. So we have to do equal 40 divided by 365 to get the years. Then the exercise price is going to be 60. That's our strike price. We've got this set up to automatically format the strike price and the stock price is dollars. So just plug it in 60. Current stock price is $62. Our volatility is 32%, and again, that's automatically formatted. If you were doing the Black-Scholes model by hand, you'd want to make sure that was in as a decimal, but the spreadsheet set up to automatically put that in as a percentage. Risk-free rate, 4%. And now it goes through and does all those calculations for us. The D1 formula, you can see that set up up top here in the formula bar. D2 calculates the area under the normal distribution table for D1, D2, and finally plugs those into the value of the call and the value of the put. If you look at the formula bar, you can see the formulas for all those calculations. But our call option has a value of $3.86. We also break it down into the intrinsic value and speculative premium. Since it's a call option and we can buy that $62 stock for only $60. It has an intrinsic value of $2. The remaining $1.86 is speculative premium. The put option, which had a value of $1.60, has no intrinsic value. There's no value in being able to sell a $62 stock for $60. And so that has no intrinsic value. The entire value of the option is speculative premium. Now, if you get further into options analysis, you might get into something called the Greeks. The Greeks look at how sensitive the option value is to the various input factors. Now while there are five input factors, only four of those can change. The strike price or exercise price is constant. What will change is the stock price, the time to expiration, the volatility, and the risk-free rate. So the first two Greeks look at how sensitive the option price is to the underlying stock price. Delta specifically measures how sensitive the option is to the underlying stock price. Here what this is saying is if the stock price goes up by a dollar the value of the option will go up by about 66 cents. Gamma measures how delta changes. Delta is going to change as the stock price changes so this is like a second derivative of measuring how sensitive delta is to the underlying stock price. Theta measures how sensitive the option price is to the time remaining to expiration. Sometimes you'll hear that referred to as time decay. Vega measures how sensitive the option price is to the volatility of the underlying stock and Rho measures how sensitive it is to the risk-free rate. Easy way to remember that, Theta T for time, Vega, V for volatility, and Rho, R for risk-free rate. Value of the put, 
also sensitive to those same factors, so we have a delta gamma theta vega n rho for the put as well. Now another thing that you can do with this spreadsheet is something called implied volatility. Of the five factors, it's easy to identify four of them. We can count how long the option has to expire. We know what the strike price or exercise price is. We can look up the stock price. We don't know volatility. That's a forecast, but we can estimate the risk-free rate. So sometimes you'll people talk about the implied volatility. The implied volatility can be estimated. Let's pretend we don't know what that volatility is, so we're going to zero that out. And we're going to try to figure out what it should be for an example. So let's pretend Netflix is currently trading for $273.40. And in our example, let's assume it's June 4th, and we're looking at a series of July call and put options. We want to figure out what the implied volatility is. So we're going to set that up. July 270 call options got 41 days to expiration as of June 4th. So the first thing we need is the time, 41 days out of 365. Got two columns because I'm going to look at two different strike prices. Our strike prices from our example are 270 and 280. So we're going to look at both sets of those options. 270 strike and 280 strike. Current stock price in our example is $273.40. We don't know the volatility. We're going to try to figure out that out. And let's just for the sake of argument assume that the risk-free rate is 3%. So now we have to guess what the volatility is going to be. Let's just try 20%. Plug that in for both of our options. And you can see the 270 strike option should have a call option value of 961 and 530. In our example, the 270 call was 1620. And the 270 put was 1250. So let's go back and write those in. It was 1620 and 1250. That way we can easily see without flipping back and forth how close we are. The 280 options had a value of 1130 and 1760. So let's plug those in. 1730, 1760. You can see we're pretty far off on the value. So option prices, the higher the volatility, the higher the value of the option. We need to raise the value of these options. So let's raise that up. Let's try 35%. Now you can see we're getting a lot closer. We're still a little under the current market price, but now we're a lot closer. So let's try 38%. Now here you can see we're pretty much on target. We're off by a few cents. And here we're pretty much on target, maybe a little under. Try 39. So what this is telling us is that the markets have an implied volatility of about 38 to 39 percent for Netflix during this time period. Now it's never going to come out exactly right because the option prices aren't purely calculated in the markets on the Black-Scholes model. The Black-Scholes gives us the theoretical underpinning to the option pricing models, but options trade on supply and demand, financial markets, and so they'll be a little bit different from the Black-Scholes option pricing model. So this tells us again implied volatility of about 38 to 39 percent for this Netflix option in our example. That introduces the Black-Scholes option pricing model spreadsheet and some ways to use it to either calculate the theoretical value for an option or to look at the implied volatility.